Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna paint a lake with a sunset, some really beautiful warm colors coming through. And as always, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad. And if you want to follow along exactly as I'm going to show you, then I've opened an A4 canvas. It's just the default size within the app. In terms of brushes, I'm going to be using the soft brush, the medium brush, and then perhaps within the artistic brushes, I'm gonna use the hearts brush. I like to keep it really simple and create most of the textures manually. Therefore, you can apply the lessons to almost any app and any kind of brushes that you want to experiment with as well. In terms of the colors I'm using, I've already pre-selected some colors, and that's in this section. The codes for these colors are down in the video description. You can type them in here one at a time. If you go to this value section here at the bottom, there is a space to type them in. Type them in, press enter, the color will appear up here, and then you can just tap it into this area and recreate it yourself. Or there is also a link in the video description that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download it there for free. In addition to those links, there are links to my Facebook group and my Instagram so that if you have a go at this yourself and you're really happy with your results, then you can either tag me on Instagram or share them in the Facebook group. We have over 30,000 members there. Do come and join our community and get feedback from myself and from all the other members too. With all that being said and done, let's get started. So on layer one, I'm gonna go to my colors going to pick this first color and I'm just going to drag it from the corner to flood fill the entire canvas. Now it's not going to look very blue to begin with but when we add all the other colors and the contrasting colors then the blue is going to come through more. I'm going to go and create another layer, go back to our colors, I'm going to choose the second color along. We're going to make sure we're on the airbrushing and the soft brush. Now do bear in mind it is the soft brush at the top which is a bigger softer brush than it is if you go for the one down here. So it's not the soft airbrush within airbrushing, it's the soft brush within airbrushing. We're gonna put that up to 15% size and just a bit lower on the opacity to about 80%. And I'm gonna aim for roughly about halfway, just slightly above halfway perhaps. And then once you've done a couple of stripes of that, we can go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and then we're going to just allow it to become diffused to about 40%. We'll keep all of this in different layers. We can always merge them later if it becomes too complex, but I think it's better to keep them separate. Therefore, we can go back in and if we need to, we can strengthen, we can adjust, we can move around the different properties at different times. So we are gonna create another layer, layer three. I'm gonna to go to my third color and we're gonna turn the size of that brush down a bit more. We're still on the soft brush. We're still gonna keep it at 80% but we're going to now do it a little bit lower, so about a third of the way up. And just give it a bit more thickness. We're then gonna to go to, again, the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and we're gonna blur that in to about 30%. Create another layer, layer four. Go back to our colors, fourth color in now, and you can see I've got four colors here, then a gap, and this is for some different properties. But we've got the basic transition between the colors of these first four. So we've gone to the fourth one. And we're gonna just turn it down to about 8% size, keep it at the 80% opacity. And again, almost at a third of the way up, just at the bottom of this section we've just created. It doesn't matter whether it's a straight line. If it ends up too wobbly, then you can always just hold it at the end of that line and it will snap to a straight line anyway. But we're gonna blur it in again, so it shouldn't really matter too much. So adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it into about 25%. Now, like I said, one of the reasons that we might keep them on separate layers is that we can adjust them now. So I am going to do that, in fact. I feel like this orange tone here is a little bit low down compared to where I would like it to be. So it's easily adjusted. We've got layer two is that first diffused light yellow color. Then we've got a slightly more intense color here and it's that one I'm going to move first. So I'm going to go to the transform tool and I'm just going to move it up just a little bit and then I'm going to follow suit with this new layer th four and I'm going to go again to the transform tool and I'm just going to move it up a little bit more as well. So now as you can see that orange shape is really more around the, the third of the, the way up perhaps even just a, a little bit above that. And that's more where I feel it should be. So we're going to create another layer now, layer five. 
Now with this layer five, we're gonna go back to this light color, the second color. We're gonna stay on the soft brush, but we're gonna turn the size of it to about 3%. We're gonna turn the opacity really quite low to about 20%. And just for some background features, I'm going to create some light broken texture up into some of this blue area and just have it a little bit more disrupted, a little bit more broken than it currently is. So I'm just keeping it as, like I say, just dashes, as broken texture. It's quite a subtle element really, and there's gonna be much darker textured clouds going over the top. It's just to create a little bit more variety in that background blue. It's not gonna be hugely noticeable, I just wanted it a little bit more textured. So you don't need to go too overboard. I'm just gonna move the, the brush size up to about 5% and maybe just add a bit more of a block, a bank of texture up here. It's a relatively subtle element, so I'm gonna leave that like this. I'm gonna go back to my layers, create another layer. And I'm going to now move away from these first four colors. I'm gonna skip over to this side, that's a gap. So we've gone to this fifth color now, and I'm going to reduce the size to about 3%, and I'm gonna keep it at about the 20%, and I'm just going to have some cloud coming in here now. I guess just, again, just doing it in like tapping motions. So you could press on quite a lot, or you could press on quite lightly. Now I'm using a variety of light, and then if I want to build it up, I'll just go over it more, to be honest. I think pressing on too much is never going to give you the nicest result. It's going to give you more of a hard edge compared to what you can see I've got here. A lot of people ask me, how is it that yours appears like a soft edge and mine seems to have a harder edge? It's probably because you're just pressing a little bit too much. So build it up gradually, press lightly. We'll have it going all the way across. I'll probably have it changing colors slightly as it goes over here, but we'll just get this background tone in anyway. The more you build this up gradually, the more textured it is, even when you're likely to cover it up. At just every stage, it's just gonna appear a little bit more believable. Then I'm just going to turn the size of the brush down to 2%. Then I can go in there and just create some wispy sections that maybe have broken off. Some thinner bands of it perhaps. Back up a little bit to 4%. Maybe just have a, a few more here. And I'm just using almost like points of it so rather than dashes and just doing dots, building it up. So you're almost getting a more of a fluffy kind of texture by doing this. And then just maybe build it up a little bit in terms of the tone here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna create another layer. Back to my colors. I have a darker tone now. And I'm going to use that for lower down in the sky. So I'm going to reduce the size of the brush because the further away the clouds are gonna get, then the narrower those lines are actually going to be. So just like anything else with perspective in the distance, it's going to get smaller. The clouds here are quite thick and then with the same things in the distance, it's gonna appear as a thinner line like this. So we're at the 2% size and it still remain on the 20% opacity. And just further down here, I'm going to start having some textured lines that cut across. So again, pressing quite lightly. You don't want them as solid lines so they can break up and they can be, you know, dashes and stretches of cloud that can be quite closely bunched, but don't, they don't necessarily form one distinct line. So it's a collection of stretched out lines all bunched together really. We'll have it going over this side, although I'm probably likely to 
do some trees to obscure it over here anyway. And I'll just increase the opacity just a little bit to about 40%. And I'm just going to go in there, darken up just some of these shapes. I might just turn it down to the lower end of 2%. Sometimes there's a big difference between low 2 and high 2%. I'm just making them a little bit more distinct now. I'm just going to increase the size back up to 3%. Maybe over here they can just broaden off, bunch together a little bit more. I might even just have them merging there as well. Okay, so I'm going to create another layer, layer 8. Go back to my colours. So I've used the first two. Now we've got this much more blue and it's really going to be quite vivid compared to the other colors. So I'm going to, again, still remain on the soft brush. I'm going to put it up to about 4% and really low on the opacity, so about 10%. And I'm just going to start gradually building up some really close to fluffy, soft kind of textures here to begin with. So we'll start off by gradually building it up in this section. So you can probably hear by the tapping, the way that I'm applying this. And then it's going to come to some areas perhaps where it merges together with some of the other features that we've already got. And then it's going to start encroaching a little bit more into the center area. So I'm just going to reduce it down a little bit to 3%. Keep it at the 10% though. And I'm just going to start making these elements a little bit clearer. I'm doing it in general like a round shape, so I'm attacking it in this kind of a curve. So I don't want to do it as flat dashes anymore. Keeping it almost as a round shape, keeping that sense of round formations and I'm going to have it coming down and merging a little bit with this bank here. So I can do this as a left to right motion just to blend them together. But then as we reveal more of the actual texture of the cloud, I'm re reverting back to this rounder shape. So again, flattening it out where I want it to merge. I got it blending at the top section here. And I'll do the same over here as well. So I want it to merge here. So I'm doing this flatter left to right. And maybe it can even dominate a little bit more over this side. And then as we come into this top edge, we're going to have it more rounded like this. So it's a really low opacity. So we're going to build this up really gradually. It's one of the the ways that this works really, the way that it becomes successful is that you don't rush at it. You do it on a super low opacity and the soft textured appearance starts to build up very gradually. And then I'm just going to start placing some more denser areas of cloud here as well, having it breaking up, plotting out more and more of the sky. I'd resist the urge to speed it up by putting the opacity up, keep it low, take the time, do it gradually. We can always go back in with the opacity a little bit higher and a sharper brush and just tidy up some of the edges and refine this as needed, but just to Try and build up the impression it's better to do it more gradually, I feel. Okay, so I'm going to reduce the size of the brush a little bit to just into the 2%, maybe just a little bit higher now, 15% opacity. And I'm just going to start 
defining some of these edges a little bit more. So I want to do some smaller breakaway sections in and around the main shapes that I've created. If you wanted to fill this in a little bit more, you could do, you can just go over this area and just ramp up the intensity of that dark color. Once you've decided on the overall shape, you can go in and do this. Can go back down to the 2% again, and just firm up some of these edges and transitions and play around with the textures on those very edges. I wouldn't worry too much about trying to get the exact cloud shape that I'm creating myself. I think as long as you stick to the, the general kind of effects and the colors, then you can achieve a nice look. But trying to you know, exactly copy the shapes that I'm creating is, is not necessary. Maybe just a slightly more sharp focus, darker tuft of cloud here. So we've got a general soft focus and light version of this color there in that corner, but there's nothing to stop us having a slightly more defined little blob of cloud in there in addition to. You know, clouds and skies take time, take practice, but it's such a, a dramatic element within a landscape that it really is worth spending the time practicing with this kind of element. I think that it's such an important feature in so many pictures that it's worth the time to practice these textures, get more confident. The more you realize it doesn't have to be super precise. You don't have to copy slavishly from a photo. Like I say, don't copy slavishly from the version I'm showing you. You can take the overall effect and just play around with the textures, keep it really quite loose. I'm going to block out some more of the, the area up here. I want a, a little bit more concentration of this dark color. Reduce it back down to the 2%. I'm going to go for the lower end of 2% now. And I'm just, again, going to just further define some of my shapes and textures just a little bit. So be selective. You don't want everything to be in sharp focus with an, a sharper edge on the cloud, but there's going to be some areas that you just want to further refine them a little bit. Like I say, just create that clear edge. Just be selective. Okay, we're going to create another layer, layer nine. And we've used the first three colors on this side. Now we're going for this yellow. And we're going to start bringing in some of the strong highlights now that are going to come from the sun being in this area is going to impact the clouds that are surrounding it. So we're going to get some strong highlights bouncing off the edges of these clouds. So I can see where the bottom of this section is here. So that was on layer six, you can see the bottom edge of it here. So I'm just going to have the highlights just picking up the bottom edge of that area a little bit. And they all kind of merge together anyway, as one mass of cloud, but I know that the elements are on different layers. So I'm just going to bring out this element with a highlight and then have it breaking up a little bit. So it's bouncing off a few different parts of cloud and then we can have further stripes in addition to that, a little bit lower down. So we can fill this area with highlighted stripes of cloud. So it's really going to pick up the edges. And you can go around the edges of these darker sections, perhaps. So above and below it a little bit. So just on the top of it and just on the underneath of it. And 
and we're going to have the sun really concentrated in here. So I'm just going to place it in just roughly where I want it to be. I'm going to decide it's going to be there. Just helps to identify that and then everything else is going to be based off that obviously. Now I'm just going to generally soften that in a little bit. So we're still on the 15% opacity and 2% size. I'm just going to increase the opacity a little bit to 30%. Make sure we're on the lowest part of 2% size and just sharpen up some extra little points of texture as it gets really close to the sun. Maybe just a few more highlighted bits as we go a little bit further up as well. So I'm going to create a new layer, go back to my colors. I'll use the white. I'll probably go back over this a little bit later and you'll see why a little bit later on, but I'm just going to put the center of that sun in anyway. So I'm just going to, with the white, go over it a few times, create that sun. Then what I'm going to do is go to my adjustments, the bloom, and just turn that up to 100%. It, it, it starts to click in around the 10% or so anyway, but I'll put it all the way up to 100. It really sells it as a bright point in the sky now, but we're going to build around it and then we'll go back to that a little later on. Okay, I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go back to my colors and I'm going to use this middle row of colors, which on camera probably look quite dark and you can barely see them in comparison to the top and the bottom, but there are six different colors there. So I'm going to go to this first color. I'm going to go to my artistic brush, hearts. We're going to probably put it at the top end of 2%, have it at about 90% opacity, just a, a section below that sun. I'm going to, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can do this more controlled. I'm going to draw a line across and that's going to give me a horizon line. doesn't matter about the bottom texture at all. And I'm going to use that now to draw up from. So I'm going to do a selection of trees, that come almost up to where the sun is. So I'm keeping this as a textured brush. It just saves a little bit of time when trying to create that top foliage kind of section and texture, but it doesn't do entirely the job for you. So you need to create some gaps, some bits that stick up a little bit more than others perhaps. So you use a combination of the actual brush texture and then manually choosing where to put things yourself too. I'll have some natural sort of rises and then dips. And I'll just extend that across a little bit as well. So we're going to get slightly more closer to set of trees here, but I'll just get the, the basic shape in first and then we'll go over it and refine it with different colors shortly. So if we just get the positioning in to begin with, and this is going to be obscured by, again, a closer to feature, but I may as well extend that line across. It does no harm. I'm going to stay on the same layer, but I'm going to go to this second color along now. And it's just subtly different, but I'm going to reduce the size of the brush just a little bit. So that I was at the top end of 2%. I'm just going to reduce it down a little bit more. Keep it at the 90% or thereabouts. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And this is a slight hint of green compared to that other color. And I'm just going to break up the texture there a little bit. Create a bit more mottled variety. You may not be able to see this very clearly on screen, but it's just a layer of subtlety that adds a little bit more depth to the scene and to those details. Most of this is going to be obscured by a warm haze color. So you're only going to really perhaps notice it in this section. And I'm just going to concentrate it a little bit towards the top sections of this as well. Don't agonize over this too much. It's not really that much of an important feature and you don't need to go into excruciating detail on this either. Just get the general effect. We will create another layer. I'm going to go back to my colors. So I've used the first two. I'm going to go for the second two now. So we've got the darker one first. And again, we're going to use this over on this side start to blot in and again just create that 
tree line at the top. So I'm going to be a little bit more precise now. So you might see individual trees. It's nearer to us as the viewer. You're going to start noticing individual tree tops, perhaps, or tufts at the very least. I'm just going to block in this to a slightly darker tone as well. So it just ramps up the, the strength of tone, the darkness, just a little bit more as it comes over to this side. That's just the subtlety that we want to create. And then I'm going to go to my colours and we've got an even lighter, slightly warmer tone now than that one. So it's not quite as green, it's a warmer tone. Keep it on all the same settings. So 2%, 90%. And we're going to use this now just to create a sense of separation of texture. So imagine perhaps where the top of the tree spike is here. I'm just going to do some highlights along the edge of that tree, perhaps. But again, I wouldn't worry too much about thinking about where to put this broken texture, as long as you feature it in there. In fact, I'm going to turn the opacity down just a little bit to about 70%. So it's just a little bit more subtle as the way we build it up. It's still quite noticeably contrasting, and that's great. But I'm just creating breaks and tufts. I'm also keeping it quite broken in the way that I'm applying it to. Perhaps I'm going to turn the brush size up just a little bit so it's just encroached onto the 3%. Okay, so once you've done that texture, we're going to create another layer. And we're going to move along to the last two colors now. So we've got this real dark color now, almost black. And we're going to use this color over on this side for just a slightly closer to feature. So it just comes down just a little bit more. So we can just create a slight bottom edge here. Don't be too neat about it. It doesn't really matter. And then we're just going to create some bushes. So obviously stick up further because they're nearer to us. They don't need to be bigger necessarily. They could be smaller, but because they're closer to us, they're going to be taller looking. You can have one or two breaks in the texture patch just where the light's coming through. But otherwise I'm going to actually close down the majority of that. Zoom in a little bit, turn the size down. So on the lower end of 2% now I can just go in and just refine some of these edges as I see fit. So I've zoomed in a little bit and when you zoom in you realize that this really is just a, a general effect. Just create the Im impressionistic look of this type of scene. Now you can go in here and you know paint every single leaf if it so suits you but I'm just trying to get you to the, the general look and then you can refine at your heart's content but but I'm more interested in getting the effect first. Okay, so then we've got another color here, which is quite considerably lighter. So I'm gonna turn the opacity of that down to about 30%. I'm gonna keep it on the 2% size, and I'm just going to pick out perhaps the edge of a feature here, just to separate out some of these textures. I could turn it up a little bit more because I'm pressing quite hard there. So I'll put it at about the 50% and I'm just using it to pick out some bushes and some edges of things. So it's mainly silhouetted, but it is picking out perhaps the edge. Now we know the sunlight's over here. So it's going to perhaps just pick up on the edges on this side, the left side. But we don't need to be too dramatic about it. Okay, I'm going to go to my layer 12 and layer 11, and I'm going to merge them together. Now it's difficult to pinch them together sometimes, so if you struggle, just press the layer and click Merge Down, and it merges with a layer underneath. And I'm going to duplicate that layer, then go to the Transform tool, flip it vertically, and move it down so that it's creating a nice reflection on it now. Zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go to the adjustments 
the motion blur and just blur that in a little bit. If it bleeds away from the edge there, we can just go in and smudge that in. So we do want it slightly blurred in. So I'll put it around the 20%. Go to the smudge tool and just push that across so it meets the edge still. We're going to do the same thing with layer 13. So we'll duplicate that layer. Just move this so you can see it. Transform it, flip it vertically, move it further down. Adjustments, motion blur, blur it in slightly. So I'm going to take layers, both layers of the 13, either pinch them together, which I've just done, or do the merge down option. So I'm going to take both the layers 11 and merge them together. And you can see both the land and its reflection now are on one layer. I'm going to go back to that layer, go to my colors, and I just feel like I want to subdue it slightly with a warm glow. So I'm going to go to this middle color here, this orange, and it wants to be quite subtle. I'm going to put it at about the 20% size, and I'm going to put this really quite low on the opacity to about 5%, and I'm just going to bring in that orange color just once across. Now it isn't much, I'm going to show you the before and after. So here's the before and here's the after. It's just a hint, just creates that warm hint of a glow slightly in the distance. We're going to ramp it up more here, but I was concentrated on this area. So I'm going to go to my other layers where the sky features are. But the easiest way of duplicating everything else is to just remove the layers with the land to begin with. And then we can go to the wrench symbol copy canvas, just click back out of it, go back into it again, and you'll notice the paste option now has become visible as well. So you can't see it initially, but if we go back to our layers, you can see we've got a whole layer now. You can see it in the thumbnail that has everything represented on that canvas, but it's put it onto one layer. Now that's going to be useful because we're going to go to the transform, flip it vertically, and you can't yet see what I'm going for. So I'm going to remove a section of it. So this takes a bit of mental gymnastics, but we're going to go again to the selection tool this time on a rectangle. And I'm just going to move the top section. So I've selected that bit, go to the layer, click it, press clear. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my land feature, which is here. It's actually obscured now, so I'm going to put it back up above. So we've got the land features featured above that reflection of the sky. We're still on the sky selection. So now we can go to that with the transform tool. And we can just move it down and place it wherever it's most appropriate that's going to create that reflection. So we do have a point of reference here, which is the where the two sections of land meet. And that is our horizon line. So we want that to be the middle point between the two suns. Like that, we can go ahead and put the land feature back in on the right hand side as well. And just like we did with the other reflections, we're going to go for this reflection and we're going to go to the adjustments and the motion blur and just blur it in slightly again to about the 20%. So I'm going to go to the top layer, layer 13, and create another layer. So now we've gone layer 14. Go back, a couple of colors. So we're going to go to this first four colors and we're going to go for this orange color. And I'm going to reduce the size of the brush. Again, we're back on the airbrushing, we're going to go for the medium brush this time. I'm going to put it at the 2% size and low on the opacity at 20%. And then just where we have, I'm just going to turn it so I can draw this line easily, where we have the point of the reflection, that line of symmetry, I'm just going to add a top edge for either where the water is or where it meets the land as well. So it's going to create that a slightly firmer line. back in with my colors. So I've done the orange color, but I'm going to go for a lighter color that's here at the top. And again, I'm going to do similar. So I'm just going to give it a few points here, maybe even reduce the size a bit more. So it's really at the 1%. Just ramp up the, the lightness perhaps. And then over this edge, I'm going to go 
So this blue color, in fact, I think that would be a suitable color just to bring out more of the lightness in the sky reflecting down into this area. And we can have more than one dash cutting across as well, more than one line cutting across. And we can have something similar over onto this side. So I'm going to go back to that nice color on this section. And I'm just going to start having it meeting the edge here. It's not going to be a straight line this time because we're going to have a slightly more obvious bank that almost forms like a curve here. And I'm going to go back over to the side as well, perhaps just add a little bit there. Back in with my, I'm going to go for this orange color this time. I'm just going to build it up a little bit here. It feels like it's got almost too narrow there. So build it up just a little bit. Take your time, do that carefully. Okay, I'm going to move the sun layer, which is layer 10, all the way to the very top because I'm going to do some glow effects that I need to go underneath that sun. I want the white of the sun to be the most prominent thing, obviously. So I'm going to create another layer, but I'm going to put this layer underneath where the sun is. And on this layer, I'm going to put it on screen. So you click on the symbol here. It's normally on the N for normal. I'm just going to scroll down to where it says screen. And I'm going to go to the colors. I'm going to use this really strong orangey red color. I'm going to use the soft brush. I'm going to put it up to about 10% size and have it about 30% opacity. And in and around this area now, I'm just going to start increasing the glow. And you'll see the difference. This is one of the major advantages of having a digital format, is that you can do all sorts of things in the digital realm that perhaps you wouldn't be able to do traditionally. So this just helps you play around with the effects and you get a really nice saturated warm glow there. And I'm just bringing it in and I'm having it diffusing and disappearing once we get out of that central area. So I want it to be in and around this area. So once we get to about here, then I'm going to have it dissipating out. And if you feel like it's too obvious, like you've got a hard edge, then you can always go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur it in as much as you feel it's necessary, just so that you've smoothed that in a little bit. And then you can always go back into it and amplify it up a little bit more until you're satisfied that it looks good. I'm going to re reduce the size of the brush now to 3%, put the opacity up to 50%, and I'm going to start using this now just lightly to add some wisps of cloud. In fact, the brush size is too big, so I'm going to put that down to 2% again. And just maybe there's some really foreground wisps of cloud, perhaps, that are just catching a similar glow and light. We may as well just start to blend this in a little bit. Just be careful not to go over to the land, the land feature like this. And I'm just going to turn the opacity down a bit more to about 15%. That way I can just add some subtleties in there. And again, it's a combination of lower opacity and pressing lightly as well. The low opacity in itself is not necessarily enough. You need to use that combination of low pressure with the pencil as well. And likewise, we might just add a little bit more of that effect into this lower section. Now it's going to be disrupted and broken up by the water, so we don't have to worry about it being a mirror image of that, but we do want to bring some of that lighting down into the water perhaps. So just do this as broad streaks in the water. I'm going to change to this lighter orange. Again, make sure we're on the lower end of 2%. And then just on bits of this cloud, I'm just going to add just a hint of highlight even more. Again, we're still on that screen setting. Maybe a bit more in this area too. So 
I'm looking at the sun and I think I want to amplify it again. Now we used the bloom setting on it before, but every time you do that and then you try it again, it actually resets it so you can multiply it again. And you can see it's just doubled in intensity there, which is really quite a nice effect. So what I might do before I do that is just duplicate the layer and that in itself has a multiplication of the impact. I'll go to the layer, the bottom version, and I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, the bloom, and just multiply that across. Doesn't matter whether you go 100% or just stick to around the 10% or a few percent in it instantly pops to a brighter version anyway. And on that layer underneath, I'm gonna click on the N and just play around with the degree now to which I want that to be apparent. So I'm gonna knock it back just a little bit so it's more than the 50% you can see without and hopefully you can see the impact with. I'm going to pinch those two together and I'm going to start thinking now about the water. So in order to disrupt the reflection and add some ripples, I need to go back down to the areas that hold those reflection images. So you'll see in this example that layer 11 has both the land and the reflection of the trees and land. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the smudge tool, put it on the medium brush, Put it quite a low size at 2% and 100% opacity. And I'm going to start just nudging these reflected elements around the left and right. And you can even turn the size of the brush down even more. So a real fine point, zoom in a little bit and just begin to push it around and manipulate that shape. You need to try and keep it in relatively straight lines. So if you want to do it as big a gesture as you can do, this is just gonna get you started it's not going to be the, the finished outcome, but it'll just get you thinking in those terms to begin with. And then we can do the same with layer 13 that holds the reflection for the other bit of land as well. So I'll turn it to however you're most comfortable and you can start just nibbling away at those edges or you can bring out from the edge as well. So a combination of going in that way and then out, pushing it left and right going to begin that process of disruption, disrupting that reflection, but it isn't going to be the full story. It's a start. Because what you can do now is you can grab a local colour. So we're on the layer in this example that holds that detail. So I'm going to grab a local colour and I'm going to make sure it's on the soft brush. Turn it down to that 2% and have it at around 30% opacity, I think we'll do. And we can just start to take some of those details and just have them disrupting. In fact, let's turn the opacity up. Let's really go for this, put it about 60%. So double that, just make sure it's really detailed enough. So I'll put it to 1%, I can always increase it back up. So I'm wanting to just create some breaks in the water. want to have it fragmenting. So move it however you want. You want to create that straight line effect. So if you want to do it up and down, you might find it easier, however works best for you. So here's a line that comes in. Maybe it's just got a little blob here. So here's another line that cuts in. Again, let's just refine that line and bring it in a little bit more, have a gap, then another section. And we can just start treating it like that. And it goes the other way too. So again, you can grab a local colour, so I'm going to go for the dark colour. And maybe it just has another section that comes a little bit further out. You're going to play around with the light and the dark, stretching the dark this way, stretching the light that way. And the combination of doing that is going to create the effect of ripples and disruption to that reflection. So it's okay to have some little dark sections on their own, they don't always need to join up. And obviously as they get further away, they're going to get smaller and thinner. The bigger sections, the more obvious breaks are going to be a bit closer to you. So I'm going to go for a local light colour again and then extend that line in a little bit, but I'm going to have a gap and then do another section, maybe just a random thing somewhere as well. And just keep playing around with that. So I've got a section here where it dips and I've got a corresponding section here, but I might just extend that a little bit further up than it currently is. I have a few more breaks. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, change the angle so I feel more confident with the brush strokes. I'm 
Again, change to another local color, so I'm going to select the dark. I'm not using the color palette this time because all the colors are contained within the scene. So you don't want to do another random color. You want it to be linked and connected to the colors that are immediately there. So use the colors that are there. And we're going to basically use that effect, but all the different areas of this scene. So I'm going to move over to this area now. I'm going to grab the dark local color and I'm going to extend that line. I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit for this color though. Back to around the 40%. Back up a little bit to the lower end of 2%. Just extend some of these lines across where it's required. If it starts to go a bit curved, just be mindful of that. So I'm going to reduce that down a little bit more. Just be mindful. Think about where some of the trees are. So we've got a particular tall part there. Maybe we could extend some of the reflection up into this area. Again, go for a local color. So we've switched from moving on to that area to moving on this. So I need to grab a nearby color for that. And then maybe I can switch to a lighter color. And just continue having disruption going in both directions. I'm going to go for a light orange that's up here, perhaps find somewhere you think it's the brightest. And then I can just bring some of that in here a little bit. So we're going to get lots of disruption in this area, but I'm going to turn the opacity really quite low to about 10%. And I just want to create lots of little broken gestures. I don't want to get bogged down in the detail for this. It's just a suggestion that there is, or there are a lot of breaks here. Again, grab another local color. Okay, we've got some slightly different tones here, so we can do the same again. We're gonna have slightly bigger ripples per here perhaps, so we've got a lighter color. I'm just gonna whack the opacity up to about 40% and put slightly bigger to the top end of 2%. I can just extend this light color in. We've got bigger ripples. So bigger breaks, but we just want to create the same sense that it's fragmenting as well. Now, just like the texture of clouds, this is something that perhaps needs a little bit of practice, judging it by eye, what's working, what isn't. Grab the darker color, again, a local color. Extend some of this blue. Exaggerate the sense of ripples. Just move back out, extend some of these lines. So I'm just going back to my top layer, which is layer 10 where the sun is. And I want to create a bit more disruption of the reflection of the sun. So I'm gonna press that white. I'm still on the soft brush, 2% size and nearly 40 off, put it at 40% opacity. And I just want to create, about to let's sharpen that a little bit. So let's put that at 1% and just a bit more break where the sun is as well. So that same sense of it slightly fragmenting, don't need to go overboard with that. Just a hint of that does the job. In fact, that's almost too much in that bottom section. So I'll just reduce the size of that last little section like that. I'm also just gonna stay on the same layer, go to the second color at the top it's not the blue, but that creamier color. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And what often happens is the sun will affect the underneath of the, the cloud. But because it's a very distant feature, obviously, the sun it's way further back than all of these cloud features. So it tends to impact both the top and the bottom edge of these cloud areas. So you might just want to add a hint of that light on the top section as well as the bottom section. You don't have to go overboard. So perhaps we'll turn that opacity down just a little bit to about 25%. That way we can be a little bit more confident and just start to add a little bit more of that light around the top edge. You don't need to do too much of it. It's just a hint, it's a subtlety. And then 
Last of all, I'm gonna go back to this. In fact, I'll go to that very light white yellow and just go into the sun area again. Again, 1% size. I'm gonna put this quite high at 50% and I'm just gonna use this now to bring out some real spots of highlights in and around the sun. Just sharpen up some of those little details and this is the last touch now because I think we're pretty much there. Maybe with the white as well. So when it gets to the very edge of the sun, we'll just have it super bright, almost merging with that sun. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed following along with this tutorial. If you've had a go and you're pleased with your results, then make sure to share them with me, tag me on Instagram or join the Facebook group if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe, press the bell notification, click the thumbs up as well, it really helps out the channel and I hope to catch you back here soon. See you later, bye now.